Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's IBIM seminar. And uh, we are very honored to have Professor Peter Denisenko with us today. So as usual, I will give a brief introduction of Peter, and then um, I will give the floor to him. And after the uh, talk, we will have like 15 minutes for the question and answer. So Peter was graduated from physics department of the Novosibirsk State University in Russia in 1996 with the specialization in plasma confinement for the thermonuclear fusion. And he did his PhD uh, between two, 1997 to 2000 in fluid dynamics in Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And he completed the PhD in applied mathematics at the University of Hull in 2004 with the topic of strong asymmetry in rotating flows. And uh, since 2007, he's working in the University of Warwick and uh, um, dealing with fluid dynamics experiments ranging from micro swimmers to multi-phase flows to ocean waves. And I will give the floor to Peter and uh, let's enjoy. Okay, uh, thank you. Let me share the screen. Uh, share screen. One sec. One sec. Uh, can I share the screen? Oh, ah, yes, here it is. Screen one. Share sound. Share. Okay. Can you see the screen? Uh, can you see the presentation? Good. Excellent. Fine. So thanks for having me here. Um, today's talk is uh, about fish swimming. So you all may heard uh, may have heard about uh, albatrosses doing dynamic soaring. Now we found uh, their colleagues. Uh, in rivers, uh, and uh, give me a sec. I will bring the just just one stick. Uh, right. And wait a bit. Wait a bit. Yes. Fine. Uh, so fish swimming in rivers. Uh, when you uh, observe fish swimming in rivers, typically they stay behind some objects. Uh, well, if there is a stone or whatever, uh, fish tend to stay behind the stone where the flow is slower, uh, waiting for some food to pass by or for whatever else reasons. So uh, for the, uh, just give me one sec. Okay, uh, so for the, um, flow be behind stones, things are clear. Uh, the stone takes some momentum from the uh, flow uh, and there is a wake behind the stone and it is easy to, for fish to stay there rather than in the free stream. Uh, things, we have exposed fish to a different type of the flow. We exposed fish to the flow behind an oscillating hydrofoil. Uh, terrible, sorry, should I? I, I stop share and just reshare it uh, as so that it doesn't blink. Yes. Okay, this should be better. You can see it now, right? Okay, good. So uh, we exposed the fish to the flow behind an oscillating hydrofoil, which creates a thrust generating a uh, vortex street. So again, have a look at the flow behind the obstacle. It creates the well-known flow called Karman vortex street. You can see that uh, like uh, clockwise rotating uh, vortices are on the right, anti-clockwise are on the left. And if you will imagine the extra flow generated by these vortices, you will see that the flow is directed against the free stream flow. So this structure of vortices, clockwise on the right, anti-clockwise on the left, creates the 
slows down the free stream flow. If we consider flow behind a flapping hydrofoil, things are slightly different. Uh, now, clockwise vortices are on the left, counterclockwise are on the right. And if you will imagine which sort of flow this structure creates, you will see that uh, this structure is actually accelerating the flow. Um, this is called inverted uh, Karman vortex street, or in other words, thrust generating Karman vortex street. So, what we have observed is that, uh, well, usually fish stays in wake, but in our experiments, we have observed that a significant time uh, fish spent in the uh, in the jet, which is about 30% faster, according to our measurements, than uh, the free stream. I will run the video. Uh, for So how we perform visualizations? Obviously, uh, well, we want to see the flow structure, but if we do ink visualization when the fish is in the flume, fish will be scared and it will not swim. So what we have done is we performed ink visualization, so flapping foil, injected ink, uh, and then we synchronized those videos. We superimposed them onto fish videos, and we synchronized them by the phase of foil oscillation. Uh, in this way, we got videos where you can see both fish and ink. And I have asked my good friend to impose uh, music on this video to trick you into believing that fish actually dances uh, on these vortices. So uh, we'll spend a minute. So now the fish can drive over to the chimney, and then it enters the lake. It starts, it changes behavior. doesn't last forever, you will see now fish will lose the reason and it will uh, leak away. So fish leaves the wake, uh, stops dancing. However, swimming outside is other disappointment and uh, goes back to the wake. And you can see that uh, this swimming behavior is completely when it is inside the uh, the fish contour uh, in the corner of this picture is just um, a fixed contour of the fish, uh, which we use to try to understand uh, which exact movements fish does to. Uh, uh, to swim in the wake. Uh, right, so we tried to explain. We performed proper experiments. So uh, now, like proper experimental report, uh, fish was observed in a flume with the speed of the order of, uh, with the flow velocity of the order of 14 centimeters per second, uh, 20 centimeter depth, uh, 20 centimeters to my memory across. Uh, you can see like uh, the hydrofoil, which was occupying almost the whole depth. So it was sort of two-dimensional flow. Well, we hope so. Uh, we used rainbow trout, which is like five centimeter length fish, uh, not too big. Um, fish was absorbed from above. Uh, we equipped the uh, the flume with a viewing window because if you don't have uh, any solid, uh, any rigid uh, top, then you have waves and you cannot observe unperturbed images of fish. Velocity was measured by UVP, ultrasonic velocity profiler, uh, and it helped us to actually quantify the flow to tell that in average, flow in the middle is 30%. Uh, faster than in the free stream. Uh, again, this is average flow, peaks are even higher. We have tried to perform particle image velocity measurements because our idea was like, okay, we have collaborators who do proper numerical simulations. We will present them with the 
flow field and we will present them with the fish position and shape and they will simulate the flow and they will tell us exact forces acting on the fish. However, uh, we failed here in the, uh, in, uh, uh, the way that we performed these measurements with the wrong uh, magnitude of uh, foil flapping. Uh, this was crucial because this not only defines uh, the strength of these vortices, and in this way it, it defines spacing between vortices, but it also uh, defines position of these vortices in the in the in the flow and. So basically, you cannot use uh, you cannot quantitatively use measurements at a wrong foil flapping amplitude. However, we can get a qualitative picture. So what is shown here is uh, instantaneous uh, counterplots of cross stream velocity. Uh, well, you can see that it is left, right, left, right. Uh, then you counter plot of y velocity corresponding to typical vortex structure, absolute value of vorticity, which clearly shows us that there are concentrated uh, vortices. Uh, all nice uh, trajectories of vortices are more or less straight, uh, well, which is good, which means that our vortex street is uh, what we want it to be. Um, right, what we've done next? We didn't have any idea of why does fish spend time there, so we tried to plot this and that. Uh, for example, like we plotted ensemble of fish positions. So what uh, you can see in this video is um, central lines of the fish uh, at the time instance corresponding to exactly the same uh, phase of the hydrofoil. So basically, uh, this video is composed from one long video with fish positions taken uh, in the in the same uh, in the same phase of the uh, hydrofoil. Well, we didn't get much from this video, except that you can see that well, um, fish behave somewhat consistently. So fish position is somehow synchronized with the position of hydrofoil. Well, nothing new, we saw it already. Uh, we tried to do some hand waving like fish is piercing the vortices or fish is uh, orienting, is uh, acquiring the shape to take energy from particular flow structures. Uh, so we plotted, um, uh, we plotted uh, different uh, uh, clouds of parameters of the fish to try to understand what happens. So out of about 30 fishes, uh, only three were properly dancing. So we concentrated on these three. Uh, so what is shown in these pictures is like uh, the column corresponds to like fish one, fish two, fish three, and rows correspond to different frequencies. Uh, and like on the left panel, for example, we tried to plot body curvature of the fish versus its position in the vortex street. Well, in particular, distance of the head of the fish to, for example, counterclockwise vortex. Uh, and on the right panel, uh, we plotted uh, angle of fish, like fish orientation to the stream-wise position. Uh, Conclusions were more or less same as visual conclusions. Uh, so the bottom row is uh, when there is no any uh, foil oscillation. Uh, so there is no dancing regime, obviously. And then we can see that uh, in some sweet spot for hydrofoil frequencies, we can see clear dependence of some parameters uh, of fish on its distance to vortices. Uh, we can see this dependence for red uh, points which correspond to dancing, and we do not see any correlation for the blue points which correspond to regular swimming. Uh, again, nothing new compared with what we uh, have already seen. Um, so, um, 
we started to think on some hand wavy explanation of what happens. Well, on the left is a classic picture of uh, albatross dynamic soaring. Uh, and I was actually surprised while preparing this talk to find out that uh, Da Vinci actually uh, um, first described on paper uh, dynamic soaring of birds. So the, uh, the picture below is uh, Da Vinci's drawing taken from uh, Royal Society, Society notes and records. So finally, we found what our fish is similar to, and fish looks to behave similarly to the uh, skate skier. So obviously, uh, you know that skiers have two types of propulsion. One is when they, uh, when their skis are parallel, and uh, the other one, which we think is relevant to this case, is when they uh, act as uh, skaters. Um, so what skaters do? They use their muscles to throw the body to the right, then to the left, then to the right, then to the left, uh, and orienting skis in such a way that they, I mean, they um, orient in skis at some angle to the desired direction of motion. So when, uh, when the body is moving to the left, uh, the left ski is, um, uh, is under the load, and because the ski cannot go sideways, uh, sideways uh, momentum is being transferred to the well, momentum in the direction of motion. And this happens in turn. So that's what proper uh, skiers do. And fish is the never sportsman, they behave like uh, lazy skiers. So on the left, there is the diagram where like imagine a set of travelators. So imagine you have travelator moving right, then left, then right, then left. So if you ski against, uh, if you ski across those travelators, you don't need to spend any energy of throwing your body right and left. All you can do is you can just step on left ski, then step on right ski, then step on left, step on right. And uh, in this way, you will move uh, along this meandering trajectory uh, and uh, you will get forward propulsion. Uh, why is it relevant to fish? If you impose here our uh, PAV measurement of cross flow velocities, then you will see a clear analogy. So there are areas where the velocity is to the right, areas where velocity to the left. And uh, this type of picture is, because there is a flow, this, this picture is passing by fish, which is station home. Um, what is the hydrodynamic explanation for that? So on the right, uh, I try to present a diagram of what fish does. So uh, dotted line, this dotted line is um, trajectory of the fish uh, in the frame of reference of vortices. So obviously fish is uh, holding the station, but vortices are passing by. So in the frame of reference of vortices, fish is swinging between them. Um, so like, Consider fish at the point between points five and six. So at the point four, fish had velocity directed to the right. Then it enters the place of the flow between vortices where the fluid flow is directed to the left. So on this insert, you can see like fish body somehow schematically shown. Uh, in the external flow. So apparent flow, uh, as fish sees it, is directed from the right and from the front. Um, as it is shown in the picture, you can associate fish body with an airfoil, which is obviously not true because airfoil is two-dimensional and fish is significantly three-dimensional, but still, 
fish arrange itself in such a way that uh, if you will have a look at uh, lift force and drug force, uh, their resulting sum, well, under assumptions that the fish takes appropriate uh, position, angle, and the shape of the body, sum of lift and drag has a streamwise component which is directed against the flow. Um, so what happens? When fish is in this position, it is being accelerated to the left and forward. Uh, and next, so this is between points five and six, fish is decelerated when moving to the right and then accelerated back to the left and accelerated forward. Then fish goes, passes by uh, clockwise vortex and repeats the same maneuver when exposed to the flow, flowing to the left. So fish sort of orients itself appropriately in the appropriate uh, regions of the flow. And uh, this is the way it uh, gains the momentum. So take home from this particular slide is fish is a lazy skier, which uses travelators. Right. Well, this is all hand waving. So we try to entertain, well, we try to prove that it has some physical meaning. So we plotted some phase trajectories. So what we've done, uh, you can see this uh, like big insert. This is the phase trajectory of the fish uh, in coordinates cross stream acceleration horizontally and stream wise acceleration vertically. Um, we, um, you can see that like these um, light pink lines show that actually trajectories of the fish are very scattered. They all are like every swing is different from the next one. So we performed some sort of uh, averaging. We averaged fish positions in this uh, plane uh, by the phase, well, by its position uh, to the vortex. And we found that there are these well-defined H-shaped uh, trajectories. Again, we did it in exactly the same way. We uh, manually identified regions and um, we manually identified segments in the field where fish is regularly swimming, dancing, and well, green is something in between where we're not sure what the fish does. Um, so uh, what this H-shaped trajectory means? Uh, so when the fish horizontal acceleration is at its maximum to the right, so fish is being accelerated to the right, uh, this time instant corresponds to its maximum streamwise acceleration, which is more or less what we just argued uh, the uh, skate skier does. So uh, we can see that while dancing, you can see this uh, H-shaped uh, phase trajectory, while when in a regular swimming regime, this um, bunch of blue points, you can see that, well, uh, uh, no significant cross stream or stream-wise acceleration is observed because fish is just waving the tail at high frequency and uh, it is not notable um, in the sense of the whole body acceleration. We plotted these for all our favorite uh, trio of fish. So again, uh, this um, array of plots on the right, obviously I have shown off the best one, the H-shaped one. Others are not as nice, but they still, but you still can uh, recognize that when the fish is dancing, its face trajectory is completely different and it exhibits high accelerations compared with the regular swimming. Um, well, again, that's our theory. And uh, we performed another, uh, uh, we plotted another, uh, uh, another value to prove that fish behaves completely differently. Uh, we performed a frequency analysis of the shape of the fish center line. 
And these uh, three graphs on the left, you can see that for different uh, foil frequency, uh, sorry. Uh, so each plot corresponds to a separate foil frequency. So when the foil is stationary, uh, fish tail beats with frequency around like six, six to eight hertz. Uh, and when we introduce a foil, uh, the tail beat frequency uh, becomes nearly unnoticeable and a very strong uh, body bending uh, motion appears at the frequencies synchronized with the hydrofoil. Um, next, so again, this is our theory. Let's try to understand whether the mechanism is uh, viable at all. Obviously, we failed to get a proper numerical simulation because we didn't have proper velocity measurements. So let's try to do back of the envelope estimates. So to recap, what is our mechanism? Fish is gaining velocity to the right. Then when in the flow, it orients body appropriately and when uh, and decelerates and being thrown to the left. So we want to see what will be the characteristic deceleration time of the fish. So like whether the time between vortices has any relation to the time fish needs to decelerate. Uh, and uh, spoiler, it is. So we write down second Newton law, F equals MA, in which our formulation. So uh, cross stream force is of the order of magnitude mass fish times cross stream velocity divided by deceleration time. For the hydrodynamic force, we use the usual formula, side area of the fish times drug coefficient, drug, lift, whatever, we anyway assume it is of the order of one uh, drug. Uh, density of water, velocity squared over two, and on the right, we have mass of the fishes, density times volume, and uh, all the same. Uh, obviously, we assume uh, density of water and density of fish is the same because it's neutrally bound. Uh, cancel those, cancel one of velocity, and uh, combining the uh, numbers together, we get like uh, W is width of the fish, which is volume divided by side area divided by drug coefficient, which for a cylinder is of the order of one and uh, the cross stream velocity, which is like 10 centimeters per second with respect to flow, like our approximate measurement. And we get uh, the answer that deceleration time of the fish in cross stream direction is at the level of 0 0.2 seconds, which is consistent with our 1.6 to 2 hertz uh, foil frequency when the fish actually dances. Uh, on this diagram on the right, this deceleration time corresponds to this bent um, region in the trajectory. So when fish changes its uh, direction of motion from left to right. Uh, so the conclusion is as follows. The frequency at which uh, fish dances on these vortices to gain energy is defined by deceleration of the fish in the cross flow direction and not by something like um, uh, the fact that fish size is comparable to the distance between vortices or fish size is comparable to whatever uh, vortex size. Uh, but this back of the envelope uh, estimate shows us that our um, idea of how the fish behaves is more or less reasonable. Um, what we did next, the most dodgy part of this research. Uh, so we decided to evaluate what will be the uh, energy expenditure of the fish uh, in this case. Okay, I will start from the fact that uh, like this uh, bottom right plot, 
what biologists like to do uh, is uh, to show how the behavior of fish changes. So we measured how much time fish spent in like this dancing uh, gait uh, versus regular swimming gait and uh, and uh, what was the proportion of these gates uh, versus frequency. Uh, so you can see that, well, obviously at zero foil flapping, always regular swimming. Uh, then there is some amount of dancing behavior uh, displayed by fish in the sweet spot between like whatever 1.5 and 2 hertz. And when the frequency uh, of vortices passing by the fish uh, is getting too high, uh, fish stops uh, dancing because these uh, is, uh, vortices are too uh, direction of the cross flow changes uh, too often and fish cannot harvest energy from it. So how we did uh, energy expenditure estimates. Um, we didn't find anything in the literature. So what we assumed is like, we assumed usual, you know, like uh, PDV value, which is used, used in thermodynamics, pressure times change in volume as the energy produced. Uh, well, again, there is some dodgy argument because we didn't take into account that the, the fact when the fish contracts in the spin wise direction, it does expand slightly. When the muscle contracts in longitudinal direction is slightly expands in cross direction, but still we constructed this formula. Uh, expression under the integral is the rate of change of volume of the muscle, which was integrated in some funny interval from one third of the fish length from the head to 13 16 length, which is more or less random number, but it is some random uh, some reasonable value when we think muscle ends. So it is from where the head ends to where the tail starts, tail with no muscles. Uh, the poor fish was dissected, uh, one of them, not all three. Uh, and we literally just uh, did contouring of these uh, muscles. Uh, and substituted obtained uh, contours into this formula. Uh, and what we got is that uh, power of uh, what is plotted here is power of the fish divided by its power in regular swimming in the absence of uh, uh, in the absence of what street. So what we find is for different foil frequencies, blue points are, when fish is in regular swimming regime. Red triangles is when fish is in uh, dancing regime. So for all frequencies in average, we can see that regular swimming is uh, takes, well, in average, similar or higher amount of energy and uh, dancing saves up to 25% of energy. Uh, Obviously, this calculation uh, contains a lot of assumptions. So we try to play well first with these numbers, like uh, with the part of the fish which is used for integration. And then we try to play with uh, this, with the power of this x. So we tried different moments of area. We didn't have any rational for that, but we tried. Uh, conclusions is same. So less energy is spent in dancing regime, uh, it may not be 25, it, sometimes it is more, sometimes it is less, but more or less the conclusion is that yes, fish uh, reliably uh, spends less energy. So, conclusion. In the flow where uh, vortices exist. Fish orients its body uh, appropriately in the flow, and also it bends its body, but this is secondary, uh, to gain 
uh, to translate to convert its cross stream inertia inertia into the streamwise momentum and this helps it uh, uh, going against the flow uh, and here i want to uh, introduce uh, the team who present uh, who did this research we did it in collaboration uh, experiments themselves were performed at cardiff university uh, flumes uh, by catherine wilson uh, Val and Steffi were actually handling the fish, uh, fish whispering, we call it, because fish doesn't uh, usually behave as we wanted to. Sam was behind a uh, significant part of image processing. Uh, that's it, and I run your movie, and also I use the occasion uh, that today is February 14th to remind you that uh, fish has a heart, and it has a two-chambered heart. And uh, have a look uh, for once more at how it That's it, uh, and I am ready to answer your questions. Thank you, thank you, Peter, for such an interesting talk. And uh, anyone have any questions? So anyone got question? If no, I will start with the, oh, I'll start with the first question. Okay, go on. So <laughs> I can see in your picture that the fish is kind of dancing in between the two vortexes. Is yes. that in, in, inside or between that, or sometimes it will also go outside it, or it just uh, steps under vortex. Uh, right. So actually, fish. Well, behavior of fish in here is complicated. So, like, if you watch for a lot of videos, it it uh, spends some time swinging uh, between these vortices. But then very often it loses the rhythm uh, and like escapes uh, escapes from this vortex street. So it uses them, but when it fails to catch the next vortex, it becomes uh, it becomes energy not energy efficient to stay there, and fish just escapes from the vortex street and then starts swimming regularly and like gradually returning to this vortex street again. So, uh, so overall, it doesn't spend all the time uh, on these vortices. I see. I see. Hi, can I can I have a question? This is Oscar Kuret yeah, from Fair Atlantic University. Nice, nice uh, presentation. I just curious. Do you think this behavior it's uh, is passively in is uh, just a interaction? passively between the fish and the vortices, or do you think that they're actively trying to, to be in that, that dancing part? I think, well, dancing in this case is arranged in the body. So yes, I think it is active. Well, I, I know what you may refer to. You may refer to the fish 
those experiments with dead fish, which was stay, uh, which was uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah. Uh, this is not the case, I think, because uh, like you can see that again, as I told, sometimes it loses the reason and it performs like escaping maneuver to get out of the stream. And then it returns to the stream, like touching the edge of the vortices to catch the face and then gets in again. So no, uh, and again, uh, one evidence is the frequency uh, uh, I can I can show the uh, I can show this plot. Uh, uh, this frequency thing. So uh, on the left panel there is this uh, frequency of the fish bending well tail bit. Uh, in the presence of the foil and in the absence. So what you can see is that the peak corresponding to its natural tail bit frequency nearly disappears when it dances. So, and like, but it still exists, but it disappears. So uh, it does some active, so it is sort of conscious reaction on this uh, vortex street, not just well, not, not just passive behavior. I see. Now, thank you. Very uh, nice presentation. Enjoy. Thanks. Uh, Hi, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, great, great presentation again, uh, Peter. Loved it. Um, this, this plot that you've shown here, can, can the red uh, plot um, for the streamwise acceleration by the cross stream acceleration, that plot, would that effectively be like a limit cycle? Uh, well, yes, yes, um, yes, it is a, I would say it is a limit cycle, uh, but, well, limit cycle is, you can call it limit cycle, yes. Uh, well, because be is, yeah. because if it if it, because if it is a limit cycle, then you've kind of demonstrated um, we could we could do a little bit of like you know Jacobian matrix analysis and stuff like that, find the eigenvalues, and you could actually show that this is an equilibrium point that the fish tend to swim in such a uh, motion because they're achieving equilibrium. Yes. Or am I going off in a tangent? This equilibrium is not. So I like, see. It, it, yes. So there is. It is. I think it is sort of unstable equilibrium. So again, if it is limit cycle, then probably you can create um, passive fish, which, if having proper mechanical characteristics, will return to this cycle. But I think fish is returning there because it feels the flow and it like guides itself towards this cycle. Uh, so, so limited cycle is somewhat stable trajectory. I don't know whether there is one is stable or not. Uh, because, not because, likely. because what I'm seeing here is you have three different fish and you're perturbing, you know, their initial uh you know velocities and you're setting them in different uh, positions and yet their accelerations are kind of like coming together in this equilibrium across time it's uh, it's extraordinary that you observe this behavior it's not it's not this is average trajectory so this is not like every 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 swing is different and this is anyway i don't think it is stable okay uh, but but like idea of creating something positive which will turn out to be stable in this configuration it is actually very interesting so we can create something which will stay in the stream without spending any energy um, I'll think, but I'm not sure if it is possible without conscious input from the animal. Amazing. Thank you very much.
Thank you. So anyone else have questions? Okay, we still got some time, but <laughs> okay. So if no one asks questions, 